All right, so I'd like to start off today by talking about Jambo the Gorilla. For those of you who don't know who he is, on August 30th, 1986, a five-year-old boy fell into a zoo's gorilla enclosure and was knocked unconscious. Incredibly, a giant male silverback gorilla called Jambo saved the boy after walking over to him and protecting him from a pack of apes. The seven foot tall, 18 stone, and for those of you who don't know metrics, that's 252 pounds, gorilla then reached out and stroked the boy's back. As you can see, these are caring, intelligent animals, and what do we do? We put them in cages. Therefore, I propose that we must dismantle all zoos in the world by January 11, 2035. Now, the significance to this argument is that there exists a problem in the fact that zoos are unsafe both for the animals that are imprisoned within them, as well as the people who come to visit them. Let me give you some examples of animals that have died in zoos. A zoo in Gaza has painted two white donkeys with stripes in order to replace two zebras that died of starvation. Now, in addition to being funny, because like, wow, what are they doing? It, it sucks, because this came from the Telegraph, a British website, and, you know, if an animal dies of starvation, that, that's not a very good zoo. And this one comes from the Como Park Zoo and Conservatory itself. They said, out of 437 gorilla births at Association of Zoos and Aquariums, institutions since 1980, 26% of males and 20% of females did not make it to their first birthday. That's kind of sad if you'd ask me. And according to captiveanimals.org, African elephants in the wild live more than three times as long as those kept in zoos. Even Asian elephants working in timber camps live longer than those born in zoos. And this came from the ABC News. A sloth bear on loan to the Toledo Zoo died of dehydration because zoo officials, who thought she was pregnant, mistakenly denied her food and water for weeks. They didn't know that this bear does not hibernate, so that just shows if the zoos don't really know much about the animals, then what are the people going to learn? But enough about animals, let me tell you some instances of people who have died in zoos. Now, you know, people go to zoos, they want to learn about animals, they want to see these things in action. But there are still dangerous animals, and this is why we need to separate them. For instance, this came from the New York Daily News. A Malayan tiger mauled a veteran employee known as the Tiger Whisperer to death at a Florida zoo on April 15, 2016. Stacy Conweiser, who was 38 years old, was killed by the 13-year-old male tiger in an enclosure known as the Night House. Away from the public, which is good, no children saw it, but still bad. And th this is where the tigers sleep and are fed. And uh, Zhang Zinyang, who was 35, had drunk four drunk beers before deciding to enter the Beijing Zoo pen that belonged to a six-year-old male panda, Gugu. Now I know you all think pandas are cuddly, but no, the startled Gugu bit both legs of his intruder. That came from BBC News, by the way. And a f the, here was one that I thought was really gross, because there is even a video of it on YouTube. But according to the Daily Mail, which is a British website, a 50-year-old man has been savagely mauled to death by two tigers through the bars of their zoo cage as he tried to take a picture of them with his mobile phone. After he put his arm through the bars of the cage, the two tigers attacked him and tore off his arm at the shoulder as his horrified wife and two children looked on helplessly. Sad stuff. And one more about people in dying in zoos. At the Pittsburgh Zoo, a mother's attempt to give her two-year-old son a better view of wild African dogs turned into a tragedy after the boy fell into the exhibit and was killed by a pack of the animals. Painted dogs look somewhat like cheetahs. I mean, the hyenas, I'm sorry. But now let me move on to inherency. Or, I mean, I'm sorry, no. how zoos are not educational. People go to zoos because they want to learn, but it's just not the case. According to Society and Animals, which is an online news journal, or scientific journal, I'm sorry, there remains no compelling evidence for the claim that zoos and aquariums promote attitude change, education, or, in, or interest in conserva conservation in visitors. To back this up, let me talk about, according to hubpages.com, visitors spend on average 10 to 117 seconds at each exhibit performing animal shows that teach children that animals are clowns. Zoos promote human dominance mentalities and keeping wildlife as pets, 
And what children do learn at zoos can be learned from other sources. There is no evidence that children learn from zoos, and zoos focus more on ent entertainment. And my third main point is that uh, we should not prioritize man-made currency over the beauty of nature. Because fundamentally, this is where we came from, is nature. And we're just destroying it. And according to uh, Last Chance for Animals, the zoo's current elephant enclosure, the Elephants of Asia exhibit, opened on December 16, 2010, at a cost of $42 million. This is at San Diego, by the way. While an Asian elephant in the wild may roam freely over a range of 150,000 acres, the exhibit consists of just two acres of walkable ground, subdivided into five smaller yards. Not nearly enough room for the three resident elephants, Billy, Tina, and Jewel. But now let me move on to my inherency claim. While there are organizations like the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, here we will call them AZA, that strive towards quality of zoo enclosures and staff, accreditation is not mandatory for a zoo to remain in business, and as a result, many zoos treat their animals poorly or give them inadequate living addition, um, in conditions. I'm sorry. Here's one from National Geographic News talking about accreditation. Among the 2,400 animal enclosures licensed by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, only 212 are under the strict re regulatory umbrella of the American Zoo and Aso Aquarium Association. The other 2,188 are not. And now let me move on to my insolvency claim here. If we dismantle all the zoos of the world, then animals will be living better lives the way nature intended for them to be. Now think about the quality of years, not quantity. I ask you this. Would you rather be living 80 years in solitary confinement or 50 years in a thriving community with people you love? And for my next point, though, if the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey can get rid of elephants in the circus, then Zeus should be able to follow suit. How do you shut it off? Let me just finish off with my plan of action here. So to accomplish this goal, the United Nations will slowly phase out all currently existing zoos as any countries who do not comply will face an embargo against all other countries that are part of the UN. For those of you who don't know, an embargo means block of all trade. Any animals that will not be dead by the time of this deadline must be taught wild rehabilitation by the zoos. Well, they will learn to hunt or do other things natural for their survival. And, and then be released back to their native habitats where Darwinism will take its course. Thank you. I'm so sorry.